Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! Well guys, it's been a crazy year for high-end desktop PCs. We've gone from 10 cores per CPU maximum last year in 2016 to now as many as 18, with today's launch of the highest end, fastest, most core county, and most expensive CPUs Intel has ever suggested a mere home enthusiast purchase. The Core i9-7980XE, XE meaning Extreme Edition, is what I'll be taking a look at today and sharing some introductory benchmarks. I'm also going to be taking a look at the 16-core 7960X, which will retail for $1,700, currently installed in my test bed right now. The 7980XE goes for too large, $2,000, so neither of these CPUs are meant for those with limited disposable income, but since when has limited disposable income stopped a hardcore PC enthusiast? Specs have been disclosed already, but I'm going to run down them really quickly. All of Intel's current CPUs are manufactured using 14 nanometer process technology, so it's kind of nice to have that parity between their mainstream and high-end parts. And for the enthusiast platform, the motherboards use the X299 chipset and LGA2066 socket. Six core and up CPUs on this platform, which are the only ones worth discussing, are based on Skylake X architecture, and prior to today, the top version was the 10 core 20 thread i9-7900X. Intel is adding 12, 14, 16, and 18 core CPUs to the lineup now, and they'll cost $1,200, $1,400, $1,700, and $2,000 at retail, respectively. They'll all turbo boost up over 4 GHz when they're only running on a few cores to improve single core performance, and Turbo Boost Max 3.0 allows a couple cores per CPU to run at 4.4 or 4.5 GHz when running tasks that use only one or two threads. You get one megabyte of L2 cache per core, basically, so 18 megs for the 18 core and so on down the line. And the 14 core and higher CPUs have a 165 watt TDP. Finally, there's 44 PCI Express 3.0 lanes directly connected to the CPU, as long as you spend $1,000 or more on this 10 core 7900X or better. And you can also game on this platform, I should mention, but practically speaking, it's really made for processing intensive workstation tasks such as 4K video editing, 3D design or physics simulations. All that said, let's dive into the benchmarks. So I have a new test bed set up and I need to say a big thank you to both Intel for sending these CPUs over as well as Asus who coincidentally sent over their Rampage 6 Extreme just in time for this launch. So I of course installed that and got it set up. Apart from that motherboard, I'm using the G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. It's a 3200 speed kit running at cast latency 14. I have an Asus GTX 1080 Ti Strix Edition running at the out-of-the-box overclock speeds. For storage, I have a Toshiba OCZ RD400 512GB NVMe SSD. And for cooling on the CPU, I have the NZXT Kraken X62. It's a 280mm closed-loop cooler. It's been doing an excellent job so far. And powering everything is a Rosewell Tachyon 1000W 80 Plus Platinum Rated Power Supply. Our first test is Cinebench and the multi-threaded test. Here I have a range of CPUs to compare it to, even some mainstream CPUs. And here you can see the big difference in raw compute performance when using all the threads. 7980XE with the 3400 score, uh, biggest score I have seen on this platform with a mainstream consumer level processor. That's pretty insane. Just about 200 points less on the 7960X, 1950X coming in just shy of 3000 and then on down the line. Next up is Cinebench single threaded, and here we can see the single core performance deficit for the Ryzen based processors, the 1950X and 1800X. Granted, all of these processors are running at stock speed, so yes, you can get a little bit more performance out of those if you do run them overclocked at 4 or 4.1 gigahertz. But overall, the Cabby Lake or Sky Lake, depending on which architecture you want to call it, performance of both the 7700K as well as the X series CPUs from Intel are pulling ahead with scores all above the 190 mark. Next up is CPU mark in the overall test. Again, a synthetic test, but shows you the performance you can get out of using all of your cores at the same time. And here the 1950X came in with 24,400, which was a bit behind the 7960X. So here again with 16 cores versus 16 cores, you're getting better performance out of the 7960X. Granted, it does cost more as well. And then of course, again, the 7980XE coming in with the massive 28,200. 
In CP Mark Single Threaded, we see scores that are roughly similar to what we saw with Cinebench Single Threaded. Uh, we have the Ryzen-based CPUs coming in with scores around 2050, and our Intel Skylake X CPUs coming in with scores more in the 2500 range. 7700K still proving it is the single core beast, uh, coming in with a score of 2651. That is due to its high frequency, I think, by and large. Next up is Blender, a very popular rendering utility for 3D artwork and otherwise. And here I have updated my tests um, thanks to some feedback that I got last time around. So uh, there you go. The numbers should speak for themselves here. Again, the 7980XE uh, is pretty dominant when it comes to performance. Next up is POV Ray 3.7, a very popular ray tracing utility. This is just time in seconds, so lower is better on the scores here. And again, the 7980XE comes out ahead with a 39 second score, 7960X coming up just behind, and then a few seconds behind that is the 1950X. Moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro, rendering a 4K video at 40 megabits per second. This is time in seconds once again, so lowest is better. And lowest here is actually the 7960X. So here is an indication where 18 cores is maybe a little bit too much for the software to deal with. This was kind of my assumption here. Um, I mean, we've gone from, like I said, 20 threads or so last year to uh, applications dealing with 36 or, 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 or more threads this year. So. This may be a situation where Premiere Pro just didn't exactly know what to do with that extra horsepower, allowing the 7960X with its higher clock speed to come in with a slightly better score. That said, the 1950X is a little bit slower here, but they're all still sort of well within the range of each other, only about a 15 second difference. Moving over to some game tests, starting with 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. I have the overall and graphics scores here, but I want to mainly focus on the physics score because that is where you're going to see the most difference when it comes to actual CPU performance. Here we saw again a bit of an anomaly with the 7960X coming out with the highest score of about 28,500, whereas the 1950X and 7980XE came in with scores around 26,000, a little closer to 27. So here again is a situation where I believe the software is not able to take advantage of all the cores and threads that are available with the 7980XE. Therefore, you're seeing better performance out of the higher clock speeds of the 7960X. So here's a situation where maybe the top end CPU isn't necessarily all it's cracked up to be. Maybe, maybe the 16 core is a little bit more practical. Of course, software updates might change this in the future. Moving on to 3D Mark Time Spy, again we can see the CPU score is uh, the main going to be the main focus. And here we saw a very similar CPU score. I think again this is a situation where you're not seeing the software scale with the number of threads that's available because we saw very similar scores, not just between the 7980 Extreme Edition and 7960X with the 7960X winning, but also very comparable to the 1950X and 7900X, indicating that maybe 3D Mark Time Spy at least. Um, doesn't like more than 10 cores. That's that's what I'm going with here. Finally, a quick game test of GTA 5 running at 1080, and this is a great way of seeing if your CPU is holding back a high-end GPU at all, and with the 1080 Ti in there, this does show some performance difference depending on what you're using. So the 1950X and Ryzen has been known to not give quite the maximum performance with GPUs, again, and depends on which situation you're in, and 1920 by 1080 is a resolution that teases out more of a difference there. However, we can see a score of 134 frames per second on average for the 1950X, whereas the 7960X actually uh, topped out here at 156, 7980XE coming in at 148. So they're all within relatively same range of each other. So I think that's just showing that single core performance, again, is a bit more important when it comes strictly to gaming. Now, I was measuring power draw as well, since these are high-end desktops and uh, efficiency might be a concern of yours. Just measuring the power drawn from the wall and measuring peak power as well as idle power. Idle power was a little bit higher than you'd get on the mainstream side. In fact, hitting uh, close to 120 watts um, with the 7980XE installed. Dropped down by about 15 watts to about 102 with the 7960X. Peak power draw for the 7980XE was about 457 watts, and for the 7960X was 446. Um, when I was just running the 3D Mark mix test and looking at power draw for that, it was actually pulling about 410 watts on average. So actually very similar power draw numbers here when you look at the 7980XE compared to the 1950X. Um, but given that these are high-end workstation type uh, systems, your expectation is gonna, gonna be that they're gonna pull more power probably than a typical gaming PC anyway. When it comes to temperatures is where I was probably the most impressed when it comes to these CPUs. 
Uh, we had heard that VRM temps can get pretty hot with X99. X299. That's mainly if you're overclocking, which I'm going to dive into in another video. Um, but with all those cores in there and the limited amount of space to disperse the heat, I only saw a maximum of about 62 to 63 degrees Celsius. This is under an IDA 64 stress test for 15 to 20 minutes with the 7980XE. And with the 7960X, didn't get above 60 degrees. Um, and, and that's under a stress test for a decent chunk of time. Uh, again, I'm using the NZXT Kraken X62 for this, which is a pretty high-end closed-loop cooler, but not necessarily like a full closed-loop system or all copper or anything like that. So it's nice to know that you can keep the temps down on these processors, still get that range of a uh, Turbo Boost Max 3.0, um, but not have to worry necessarily about setting up a custom loop or crazy overheating or anything like that. I found that the out-of-the-box performance of both of these CPUs, especially when rel compared relative to their temperatures, was, was quite good, actually. So, so that's nice. But anyway, though, let's uh, do some closing thoughts here. Clearly, the Intel 7960X and 7980XE CPUs can outperform AMD's Threadripper 1950X, but price must also be considered. $1,000 for the 1950X versus $1,700 or $2,000 for Intel's options and here's an example look at Cinebench scores to compare. If you can score 3,000 points for $1,000 with the 1950X, that's three points per dollar. Intel 7960X would only give you about 1.9 points per dollar and the 1980XE a bit less at 1.7 points per dollar. So the bang for the buck option here is definitely the 1950X. In conclusion though, I have to say that the 7980XE actually works pretty well as a Halo product for Intel. Massive performance across 36 threads, stayed remarkably cool at stock settings, and the Turbo Boost Max 3.0 provides a great solution to squeeze out more performance in situations where fewer cores are being used. I regularly saw 4 to 4.4 GHz frequencies on one or two cores at a time, and sometimes it hit even higher than that, although I'm not sure if that was a reporting bug or not, because it's supposed to max at 4.4 or 4.5. Now the 7960X is $300 cheaper, but it also runs at slightly higher clock speeds, giving it an edge in tasks where single core performance and frequency are favored, or with software that just doesn't make use of more than 16 cores or 32 threads. Also, it's a slightly better value than the Extreme Edition, depending on your workload. So Intel has definitely recaptured the fastest consumer CPU crown that AMD stole from them unexpectedly for about a month or two. But who knows what's next? It would actually be kind of cool to see maybe AMD answer back with more than 16 core Threadripper CPUs. They can fit up to 32 cores into the Threadripper package as they do with the Epic server CPUs that use the same socket. Ultimately though, whether you lean towards the Intel X series CPUs and their price premium for maximum performance or AMD's Threadripper lineup for more bang for your buck, there's never been a better time to build a high-end desktop PC with as many options as there are right now from both Team Red and Team Blue, and that makes me happy. I hope it makes you guys happy too. If it did, and if this video made you happy, then definitely hit the thumbs up on your way out. I have links to these products in the video's description down below. I have more content coming soon, as well as the continuation and hopefully soon to be completed Arctic Panther build. Thanks to all of, all of you for your guys' feedback on that one. I am going to go take a nap. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.